It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. Someone recently sent in a request for me to review a recent blog post here. Looks like it was from September of last year. It's called Creating Cross-Team Collaboration with Multi-Team Product Backlog Refinement. Now, I thought that this was interesting because for quite some time, I've been an advocate, a proponent for multi-team release planning. And I'm wondering if that's going to boil down into rapid release planning. So let's review the article just as we requested to. And we'll see if it boils down to rapid release planning or if it takes in a different direction. So here we go. This article focuses on refining the product backlog with multiple teams at the same time or multi-team product backlog refinement. The goal of multi-team product backlog refinement is to maximize information sharing and collaboration during product backlog refinement. We bring all development teams together in one refinement session instead of having teams conduct separate refinements. So the scrum guide mentions refinement, but does not elaborate on how much to do it or how to do it. So from the scrum guide, it says product backlog refinement is the act of breaking down and further defining the product backlog items into smaller, more precise items. This is an ongoing activity to add details such as description, order, and size. Attributes often vary within the domain of work. When we develop a product with more than one team, the scrum guide suggests to have one single product owner and one single product backlog. If the scrum teams become too large, they should consider reorganizing into multiple cohesive scrum teams, each focused on the same product. Therefore, they should share the same product goal, product backlog, and product owner. That also comes from a scrum guide. This suggests a move towards um, arranging your org strategy and your org chart to map to a single product owner and backlog with multiple teams. And it, it may be kind of scary at first to even think about this, but if you're trying to transform your organization, you might want to explore and benefit um, from Scrum events such as product backlog refinement and um, something that they're referring to now as a team of teams. Okay, so let's pause for a second. So, so far, I understand what they're trying to do, but I'm going to go on record and say, here we go, that what they're trying to do is fix a symptom. The actual problem is that the work wasn't organized well to begin with. So when the backlog items were created, let's just say they're doing everything right. And when the backlog items were created by the product owner and the the consumer needs were validated by the BA, the, the, our business analyst, the, the functional analyst went in and verified strategically what direction we're trying to go. And technical analyst gave technical input early when the product, product backlog item was created. Uh, the need to get the teams together happened shortly thereafter in a release planning session where we can have the teams size these backlog items according to uh, the t-shirt sizing method is what I prefer. And that's going to tie back to a modified Fibonacci scale, which is going to allow us to gain predictability across all of our teams. But if you're trying to create a shared understanding of the work, my, my fear is that if you have upwards of 100 people in the room and you're going all the way down to the detail level, that you're going to wind up, you know, like I would do in a refinement session, you're going to wind up having a lot of people who lose interest quickly because there's not so many people that would be involved in each item. So let's see when or why we'd want to do this. So, so let's see where this is taken. My, my thought is the concept is good, but I think it's too far down the pipeline. So let's continue. Why would you want to do a multi-team product backlog refinement? Uh, when you want to create a shared understanding of work, in, a, in other words, you want the teams to focus on the whole product or problem at the same time rather than splitting work into smaller items per team up front. Or you want to reduce the coordination effort that is needed to reduce dependencies between the teams when they work asynchronously from each other in isolation. Or you want to minimize integration issues that will occur if the teams do not integrate during the sprint. Or you have the opportunity of dealing with a challenge that affects multiple teams. This could be a shared problem or a product that has been developed by multiple teams and you need the teams to collaborate on that challenge to increase the chances of success. Or you think it's important that team members can learn from each other and you want to give everybody the opportunity to contribute to creating the best possible value. Okay. 
Once again, I feel like this is addressing something too little too late. This is one of those things where we already had the problem and this is addressing the symptom. If we would have addressed the problem, we would have already had the discussion in a release planning setting that would have said, hey, we need to do this better. How can we address this? Or how can we make sure we have some of these early conversations? That way, once the work does get uh, broken out into which teams are going to be working on which piece of work, we still have that uh, the, the confidence from release planning that we all are aware of what the big picture is, and we're leveraging the backlog refinement session as a shorter time box session to make sure that we are all on the same page and getting the most that we can out of the refinement meeting. So he does give some preconditions. So let's see if these preconditions help governor manage what we're trying to get out of this meeting. So here are the list of preconditions. In order to get the anticipated benefits of this, you will need a single product backlog and a single product owner. Okay. Um, I, I like that so far. He goes on to say, it's okay if you have many product owners running around the teams, as long as there is one single person who takes responsibility for the whole product or the cross team problem you're addressing. Okay. I'm going to pause there. I think that's not okay. <laughs> um, I do believe in a concept of very large things. So let's just take a product like, I don't know, uh, Azure DevOps from Microsoft, something huge, right? And it has many different facets. It's got many different target audiences. In fact, I know for certain it has multiple product owners. Um, but those product owners all roll up to a chief product owner or IE product manager. And I think that if you look at it from that perspective, where it is still, I'm going to use the quote from Ken here, a single accountability point or a single ringable neck, then that makes it work. That addresses it, makes it work, and makes it be something that 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 does that does function. But if you just have a whole bunch of product owners, you know, running around with the teams at the same time as you have a single product owner trying to herd the cats, uh, that's going to create friction and it's going to make things weird. You know, which master do I listen to, so to speak? And we definitely don't want to wind up there. Okay, so let's see what the next precondition is. There's restriction on the number of people involved. I've used this in practice with up to 70 development team members, uh, about eight teams. I know that there are colleagues who have run successful ones with up to 150 attendees. Okay, let's pause. Anytime you have 70 developers in a room, you need to make sure that this meeting doesn't last any longer than an hour or else you're wasting people's time. What I can tell you is a strong product backlog refinement session with one team with 10 to 12 items should be no more than one hour per team per week. Now, if you use that as a metric and you start talking about 70 people, hundreds of items, uh, oh my goodness, this, this, this meeting is going to take you know, hours and hours and hours. So, uh, so I, think, I think this is going to be struck down pretty quick. Um, let's continue. At every customer where I introduced this practice, the teams were cross-functional meaning that every team can design, test, and build the software. I suspect this practice will not work very well with single function teams. Um, and, and I agree with that as well. You, can't, you have to have cross-functional teams to be able to do rapid release planning. Uh, they can be scrum bond teams where they dedicate a percentage of their time towards a specific initiative and then a remainder of their time towards addressing tickets. But you need to have some some well-defined organization of work, right? And you need a cross-team definition of done so all teams have a shared understanding of what needs to be done and how. Okay, first one I agree with. <laughs> okay, Whew. let's see what else they say. So they say, before we can start this, the product owner and scrum master need to prepare for the session. We need to, so the product owner needs to shape the top of the backlog by identifying the product backlog items that need to be refined. Let's say 10 to 15 larger items are enough to work with um, so that the group can break those down. Uh, they need to describe the product backlog items as goals, not as outputs. And they need to provide customer-centric acceptance criteria for each product backlog item. Uh, the product owner needs to prepare the product vision and shorter-term product goals, let's say for the current quarter or less, uh, considering impact maps as a practice to use. Um, and send invitations to the whole group, relevant stakeholders, and subject matter experts. Oh my goodness. You just filled this room with way too many people. Um, 
what I'm seeing here is, uh, in the words of my dear friend, Matt Reif, lots of red flags, right? This is just going to go quite poorly with this many people. Um, the scrum master needs to book a space that's large enough for the whole group to work in and sufficient wall space to work on. They need to ensure that there are flip overs, brown paper, stickies, markers. They need to ensure that there are stations or desks where groups of people can collaborate and talk about work. They need to arrange a beamer and a loudspeaker system. I don't know what a beamer is, but okay. Um, if there's no common understanding of done across the teams, the scrum master needs to establish a minimal definition of done that applies to all teams that can be refined. And um, often the work is then estimated while refining. So the scrum master should ensure the unit of estimation, story points or t-shirt sizing and going from there. Uh, this will prevent wasteful discussions uh, in between team members uh, of different teams when estimating. Okay. I see what's happening here, and I think I'm going to pause here for the sake of time. Uh, it goes through overall refinement, detailed multi-team refinement, session details, uh, aligning the backlog, iterations, do a partial roulette, then do a full roulette, diverge and merge, uh, teach back. It, it feels like to me, it looks like, okay, here's a schedule. It looks like it starts at 9.30 a.m., and... Uh, Looks like at 1230, you're done in time for lunch. So it looks like they do three hours worth. What I'm trying to say is I don't know that you're going to get maximum benefit. First of all, number one, you're not going to get maximum benefit out of a three hour meeting, no matter how many breaks you take and no matter how many times you shake up the team. So three hour meeting is just too long. Number two, um, I don't know. I think you're trying to put too much into one meeting. Uh, while I agree that all these things that you're saying are important and need to be done, I think that you're trying to do a silver bullet solution to something that needs multiple shots to get it done. Um, and I, I want to make sure I emphasize, I'm not out of alignment with what you're trying to do. I just think you're trying to squeeze too much into a tight window. And then finally, I just feel like there's a time and a place for this. And I think that if you're waiting all the way to refinement to do this, that you've waited too long, that your window has passed. I think that if you want to get this done properly, you need to keep this window down to one hour for refinement and um, and do the rapid release planning session for an hour beforehand. What I'm saying is a couple of one hour meetings will serve the same thing as your three hour meeting. But the difference is it will isolate conversations to be only those things that are 100 percent relevant and only those things that should happen at a specific time and instance, as opposed to trying to get everything done in one fell swoop. That's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll drop a link to this article so you can read it some more and give your opinions. But um, if you have a topic you want to discuss, learn more at AgileDad.com. We'd love to hear from you. As always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.